people what up as y'all can see we got another balance patch balance update video and i need y'all to leave a like because we're gonna be hating on dark Hawk for 30 minutes <laughs> you know what i'm saying but y'all know what we do man we read we look at the cards we read the changes we talk about them so y'all hit the like button we're gonna do a double upload today because the majority of y'all don't be seeing these type of vids but it's all good right so let's just get straight into it so who we got up first big adam warlock man so I've, as y'all know his old stats were two cost zero power my bad <clears throat> and now he's five cost with four power right so what do i think of this change i think he needed something before i even read the um uh, you know the, the reason why they changed it i think he needed something i also think it's great that they made him not too strong because having that extra card is overpowered however at being five costs it's still like he's not that great because i mean you you i mean you get that extra card at the end of the the game potentially um if you're winning the lane but then again you're only four power so are you really going to be able to win the lane with adam warlock i don't know let's go ahead and read see what uh ben broden and boys got to say about him whenever we're developing an ota we always check in on cards that have been languishing which has included adam warlock for quite some time we want every card to succeed somewhere but adam warlock is a special case given how powerful the character is creatively and make no mistake this effect is very powerful drawing one drawing a card is one of the strongest things you could do in snap as decks are only 12 cards right consequently the card is designed to make that fairly difficult to do we've considered reworking adam warlock but like Spider-Man 2099 last time, we're gonna try something else first. As a two cost card, Adam needs to be dramatically more limited because even one power could help draw multiple cards. As a five four, you have to jump th through more hoops to accomplish that. That said, drawing one card is a fair bit easier as Adam carries a chunk of power to compete for the location. That's why we're staying conservative on here on power here. The effect isn't one we want to make commonplace for a lot of decks, especially given it can fuel combo decks. But if you want to work for it, there are cards to be drawn and maybe this is enough to get it done. I do think it's enough to get it done. I want to talk about how I how I think it's enough to get it done, but I guess I saved that for the Adam Warlock gameplay. So yeah, y'all tune in. I already have a fire deck in mind that I guarantee you, you're not thinking of. But um, yeah, man, I like the change. Like I said, um, I, I and I agree with uh, the reasoning they, they, that they gave. Only thing I don't like is this Spider, this Spider Man twenty ninety nine change that they literally nerfed him a couple patches ago for no reason, right? That was not a buff, but um, I, I, I do like this Adam Warlock change. Y'all let me know what y'all think of it. Definitely. So now we on to onto my, you know what I'm saying, my op, <laughs> Dark Hawk. So look, bro, I'm. And I'm biased against Dark Hawk. I just so let me let me try to give y'all a real, you know, I didn't think he was broken. I just think that that Dark Hawk decks are extremely annoying to play against because it's, it's Rock Slide, Core, Black Widow, right? You're just hiding your Dark Hawk to the end of the game, and then you're gonna copy it with Mystique because you obviously gonna play Zabu on this deck, and you probably got Shang Chi on the deck as well. So it, I just feel like it's a very annoying playstyle. I I don't per personally, if I take all my bias out, I don't think he was like too broken. It was just very annoying to play against but um five four right so you're not going to be able to zabu him anymore you're not going to be able to um play him on the last turn and mystique alongside of him right unless you got like sarah on the deck now um i mean it's just going to be more difficult he's kind of i mean without even even seeing him in in any gameplay yet he kind of reminds me of um ronan the accuser at this point right um, he, he it's it's likely that you're going to be able to rogue Darkhawk more easily. It's likely that you're going to be in, able to enchantress him more easily, right? So the the structure of Darkhawk decks might change slightly, but I still think he's okay. But let's go ahead and read. This change has been in and out of our builds for several months now, as Darkhawk has consistently flirted with individual performance rates at the top of the metagame and fueled multiple decks to similar heights. We resolved to wait and see what happened after blob and well it basically looks the same darkhawk has spent a lot of a long time at the top of the mountain as an individual card 
So we're making this change to freshen the landscape. There's every chance we'll revert this down the road in a different metagame. We do also recognize that Zabu is a huge part of Darkhawk's strength, but it's not all on Zabu, and there are other decks with the cat that are fun and healthy, right? A key word, fun. Fun and healthy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see what Zabu looks like with a new best friend in March. So Zabu's new best friend, who's that gonna be? War Machine when he come when he drops. But yeah, man. I'm glad they, they nerfed this dude. Darkhawk got a cool design. It's just the decks, bro, that I'm hating on. Y'all let me know what y'all think of him though. Let's get on to this next card. I don't want to spend too much time on that on that on this dude. We got Big Forge up next. So they just went ahead and added a cost, added a power to him. I'm pretty sure they did this change to him like a while ago, but he only had plus one or instead of plus two. I don't know. I forget. But um, I mean, before we even read, it's definitely a nerf, right? Um, you, can, you can't do your, you can't power up your dead pools as easily as you used to be able to when he costs one. Right, you're not gonna be able to use Killmonger to destroy them, to cheapen your death, to power up your node. So it hurts destroy decks like that, right? It also hurts Patriot decks. Um, actually, yeah, it hurts Patriot decks, the ones that use Brood and Absorbing Man, right? Because it's gonna be harder to, um, you know, get your your Brood out. I mean, you obviously before then you would have used Forge on turn two maybe then brood on turn three right but if you don't have your brood on turn three it's gonna be harder because you have to account for that extra cost so it did nerf him a little bit on top of that you got your phoenix force decks with multiple men and stuff like that i didn't think he was too broken but um i mean he, he was very strong especially when you look at all the other one cost cards but let's go ahead and read man funny enough this is the exact forge change we immediately we and we started internally all those months ago it's been a wild ride but forge is a great case study and what we like about ota balancing things can ebb and flow oh so, so it was the original forge I, I knew i wasn't or the the original change you know let me just keep reading for the last few months forge has been a linchpin card for multiple decks and more importantly really dwarfing the influence of other one cost cards in fact forge has appeared among the the top five most played damn of all cards in the game some weeks it's been a bit much so we're dialing down forge to reduce that impact we expect to improve a few more one cost cards to compensate for this loss in the near future that's interesting man um i also think they could have just took the route of buffing the other one cost cards you know because you really only got like for the you got like forge nebula zero um sunspot kitty pride right um that I, I feel like you see the most and then the other ones are like specialties like yandu korg and stuff like that but uh, i feel like yeah they could have buffed some other ones but i mean y'all let me know what y'all think of four she's now two costs and i now will not be using him anymore <laughs> you feel me a big ant man though they just gave him a little extra power i don't really have any thoughts on this i mean it's, it's cool right but let's go ahead and read a little bit i guess we could talk about it after i read and we're starting with this one Ant-Man is one of our favorite cards playing well for new players while maintaining some longer term use thanks to Spectrum Kazar, and Kazar among others. Given the inherent disadvantages of being a one cost card, putting a little extra power into Ant-Man's conditional shouldn't shake things up too much, but it is a meaningful amount of additional strength, right? So yeah, man, when, when you, if you ever have the opportunity to play Ant-Man in the same lane as Onslaught, that's going to be plus eight instead of instead of uh plus six right so that's huge on top of that man i, I really like this change because it, it it helps you or it promotes the use of black swan right so you black swan turn five you throw your ant-man and all your other one cost cards down on turn six and you could just throw down a six cost card or you could throw down a card like blue marvel or something like that right to really uh you know get a lot of points on that last turn i like this man y'all know y'all know i like ant man but i mean there's nothing too crazy right so y'all let me know what your thoughts are on this up next we got mrs america this is america so they made her at one cost kept her ability the same interesting um so i mean she still has the same ability it's not like forge it's not going to be as good as forge because you don't know what the top card on your deck is however you can take advantage of her if you use her alongside like brood if you use her alongside um you know those type of cards right like multiple man 
Deadpool, right? So as we're sending Forge to a two cost, it made sense to swap America Chavez down to a one cost. The effects are similar enough to seem like they overlap, but America has proven slightly too weak at two costs while Forge was very strong at one cost. Both changes together should leave us with two reasonably healthy cards. I agree. Um, I feel like it gives you a reason to use her now because you. I feel like you want to play her as soon as possible if you're going to use her on your deck anyways. And just being a one cost card allows you to do that more easily. Right? So... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really have that many thoughts on America. Like I said, you could use her with Deadpool, Multiple Man, Brew, maybe like one of those type of decks where you could take advantage of having a, a stronger card in that sense. But um, I mean, yeah, she's she's still the same. You guys let me know what y'all think. Just a little bit cheaper, right? A little bit easier to use. Now we got Big Lockjaw, man. They done, they done nerfed the dog. They done nerfed the dog. That's tough. <laughs> So he's four or five now instead of three, two. So here, let me talk about him a little bit. So you're not going to be able to to cheese your way through <laughs> with Lockjaw anymore as much as you were able to unless you have Zabu on your deck, right? So you just play Zabu turn two, then you're going get, to get a three, five Lockjaw instead of a three, two. So it's low key a buff if you, th if you think about it like that. So it's like, all right, I'm going to just use Zabu with it. I'm going to just use, um, you feel me, Psylocke with it. And, and now I just get a stronger dog, right? I get a stronger pit bull. And then at, at that point, you're still going to be able to do all your, your you know, your, your janky discard stuff, your your um, your Thanos, whatever, Thor, Beta Ray Bill, right? All that stuff, right? So, I mean, let's go ahead and read it, though. Helen and variations on Thanos have been both leaning heavily on Lockjaw lately, and while the decks are fair on performance, the card is a bit of an outlier. Lockjaw is a fairly clear is a is fairly clearly a design risk as a card that cheats energy and kind of draws cards. However, Lockjaw is also a blast to play with. We've tried to maintain a good balance around the effect, but in the last few months, it's been grown, a growing concern that even affected future design work. Moving Lockjaw up to four costs takes an entire turn of swap swaps away, which is a big loss, but reigns in the potential quite a bit. We're compensating that with a healthy amount of extra power. But like I said, man, you could just throw Psylocke or Zabu on your, on your Lockjaw team and get the same thing. It's kind of like a Mr. Negative in that sense, right? You can still play him on turn three. It's just gonna be a little bit harder to do so. But he's stronger if you do get to play him on turn three. So I don't really know what I think of that. But uh, y'all let me know what y'all think of it because we got two cards left to talk about. Big Sword Master, they just gave him one energy. Um, I still think that he's probably one of the worst discard cards for the simple fact that you cannot control who he's going to get rid of, right? You look at Lady Sif, she's getting rid of the, the, mo the most expensive cards you have. You look at, um, you know, Silver Samurai and and uh, what's what's the girl's name? Colleen Wing. They're getting rid of the lowest blade, getting rid of the one all the way on the right. So those are still the cards that you're going to be using. I mean, it's cool if you're like early game or um, I mean, if you don't have all the cards, you know, just that extra energy, that extra power is cool. Let's go ahead and read, though, man. It's fairly clear that our simpler discard enables struggle to remain competitive as we made many strong options in recent seasons. However, even in smaller collections, Swordmaster is struggling to become a reliable option, which is indicative that the card could improve. This buff makes Swordmaster a more reasonable substitute or even a complementary card in discard decks looking for robust amounts of power. I feel like they could have even gave him eight, honestly, but at, at that point, you got to do something to Hellcow. But I feel, yeah, like Hellcow... And, and Swordmaster, like, why use those? I could just use Lady Sif, you feel me? Silver Samurai, I could use Corvus at this point because he came out. So it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know, but I still think he's bad. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. We got Big Vulture for this last turn. They just gave him one extra energy as well, or one extra power as well. And I think that's actually the, the, the right thing to do if they were going to buff him because if you give him, like, plus seven or more, 
after you move him that first turn, he's gonna be able to get Shang Chi, and and that's just not a good feeling, right? You don't want to nerf move that. You feel me? One of the weakest archetypes. You you really only want to buff him. So I like this change move. I mean, it still has the same issues. I literally just did a video on dagger like yesterday, or it's gonna come. But whenever it came out, I don't know how I schedule these, but like it, it's like the the problem is you can't account for what the opponent is doing you're only trying to move your guys but even even then there's a counter to move decks and his name is kingpin you feel me and it's it, it, it's 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 tough bro it's tough but i mean it, it's i guess move decks are kind of cool against lockdown but ah it, it's just it is too hard to win with man like i explained in the last video like i kind of briefly said right now let's go ahead and read this increase to vultures movability is another instance of an ongoing trend we're enjoying which is adding a little bit of strength to some older cards that have narrowed as the game grows there was a time when playing vulture was nearly synonymous with playing a move deck but that hasn't been the case for a while now with shang chi elim now eliminating cards that 10 more 10 or more power single move vultures are also safe at nine is a nice bonus for players trying to set something up like big heme doll <laughs> but yeah man i like the change i mean i i use vulture on every move deck except for like phoenix force so i mean it, it's just like a, a nice little cool addition right i i feel like but um i definitely think they probably have to do something different i don't know how they're gonna accomplish that to like strengthen move decks but yeah, I guess this is a good start, man. But yeah, y'all, that's the February 29th balance update. Y'all let me know what you, your thoughts are, your favorite change. As always, y'all be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We're on the road to 2,000 subs. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see y'all next time.